It's official. Porn is a fact of life for young people in Aotearoa today. We now know that over two thirds of 14 to 17 year olds have seen pornography at some point. One in four Kiwi children have seen porn before the age of 12. Most often, they weren't looking for it when they first saw it. They came across it by accident, or it was shown to them. 72% of teens who have seen porn recently say they have seen things that made them feel uncomfortable. Nearly half of regular viewers would like to spend less time viewing porn, but they find this difficult to do. Astonishingly, 71% of young New Zealanders believe that children and teens access to online porn should be restricted in some way. Nearly 90% tell us porn is just not for kids. We know all this because my office has completed our survey of over 2,000 young New Zealanders aged 14 to 17 years old, and we are now publishing New Zealand Youth and Porn, research findings of a survey on how and why young New Zealanders view online pornography. This is a major study. It's been informed by frontline experts, academics, and agencies throughout the country. The scope is significant. We have surveyed nearly 1% of the entire population in the 14 to 17 year old age group in this country. It's time to face facts. Pornography forms a major part of the internet. One single porn site recorded over 28 billion individual visits last year. There are only 7.7 .7 billion people in the world. That's one single site. One site out of tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands. All of this content is available to anyone who has a smartphone, and we know that the average age of gaining a smartphone or access to a smartphone is around about 12 years old in this country or younger. So what is it really like to be a kid these days? We designed this survey as an opportunity to get young people's views and perspectives on the table. We wanted to give them a voice to tell us what is really going on in this area. We wanted them to explain what they saw, how they felt about that. We'd read a lot of studies, a lot of reports and articles written by adults explaining what they thought was going on and what they thought should happen. None of these had seemed to have had any real impact on the current reality for young people. So we thought to ourselves, young people today didn't set things up this way. They didn't create the internet. They didn't invent online porn or the smartphone. They inherited this as part of the way the world is. So what if we put young people front and centre in the debate around internet porn. What might happen if instead of telling them what we thought, we gave them an opportunity to speak? Might that give us the best chance to make a difference and to really help them? So we did that. We asked and young people answered. They did not hold back. And we now have their voices, their experiences, their evidence, so that anyone working with young people, parents, caregivers, teachers, guardians, anyone who cares, can have a clear picture of what is happening, what the issues are, and what we might start to do about it. Our aim is to help the change. We think this research gives us the evidence needed to give educators, parents, and guardians the tools, information, and support that they need. This presents both a challenge and an opportunity. A challenge because it puts beyond doubt that porn is a fact of life for young New Zealanders. They have told us in their own words how conflicted they can feel about this. They sometimes see violent, aggressive, misogynistic and coercive behaviour. But it's an opportunity because this research clearly shows that young New Zealanders are thinking about what they see they are able to recognise the potential harms. 
They overwhelmingly agree that porn is not for kids, and many of them are up for some kind of limits. So what are these issues that young people have told us about? Firstly, they've told us that porn is just simply too easy to access. Porn is everywhere on the internet, and this study shows that most young people were not seeking out pornography when they first saw it. They saw it by accident. Maybe they googled the wrong term. Maybe a friend or a classmate showed, showed it to them. They have told us emphatically, porn is not for children. In most degree, some form of online restriction is a good idea. The study also puts beyond doubt the fact that porn is informing young people's views about sex. They're learning about sex from porn and it's influencing their behaviour. Sometimes they're imitating what they see. And the older they get, or as they get more sexually active, the more likely it is that they're going to use pornography as some kind of a guide. Most people would recognise this as an issue. Even people in the industry, I would expect, would acknowledge that pornography is not a great guide for what a healthy sexual relationship should look like. But even the young people in the survey told us clearly they could recognise this. They told us it can be a problem. They worry about the false expectations that viewing pornography can place on, on them and what sex should be. And they worry about the sometimes unhealthy attitudes, stereotypes and behaviours that are often depicted. So porn is a very complicated issue for young people and they find it hard to manage sometimes. They often see things that trouble them, and lots of young people would like to look at porn less often, but they find it hard to look away. So what can be done? We don't think it's good enough to turn our backs on this. Our young people are saying not is all well here, and they are right. Let's change it. We think we have an opportunity now to take a collaborative approach. Let's look at how we can update the rules, get better tools and information out there, and improve our education in this area. Considering rules and regulation, the key piece of legislation that uh, regulates pornography in this country is the, the act that my office administers, an act that deals with films, videos and publications. The fact that it references videos tells you much of what you need to know about that act. It's a 1993 piece of legislation that's practically pre-internet. We can do better than that. We can update it and make it fit for purpose. And what young people are telling us is that they're prepared, even expect, better controls, limits and regulation in this space. Would this fix everything? No way. Any change in rules, any barrier, any limits, is only ever going to provide one part of a potential suite of solutions to address the issue. But it could help. It could provide valuable protection for children, particularly the young. Tools and information. It's clear to us that many young people do not have the information, support and tools that they need to understand pornography, to deal with what they're, they're sometimes seeing, to be resilient. And we know that many parents would also appreciate support in this area. There are some great resources already out there, but it can be very difficult for time-poor parents to locate them. We can do better here also. We can compile and make it easy for parents, guardians and young people themselves to locate the information they need, and we can identify where there are gaps. Finally, education. Education probably provides the biggest opportunity to make a difference in this area. Young people tell us they want better information on sex and sexuality. Education provides an opportunity for a vital counter-narrative to porn, a counter-narrative that could reach most young people. The initiative by the Ministry of Education to refresh the sexuality education curriculum to be renamed Healthy and Respectful Relationships provides a key opportunity to incorporate the realities of porn 
into the discussion. So we are calling for a more informed, cohesive and collaborative approach to ensure progress is made in this area. This will incorporate regulation, information support and education. We believe that this approach, supported by evidence, has the best chance of making the changes that young people are telling us should be made. Now, Mihi, thank you for your time. Now, pass to Minister Martin. First of all, I want to acknowledge David and the team sitting at the table and all those that worked from his office on this piece of research. Um, can I be very clear, this is about children, this is not about porn. This is about our children. I'm here as the Minister of Internal Affairs who has responsibility um, for over the office of the Chief Censor and has been given the delegations by the Minister of Justice around any legislative change that might take place in this area. I'm also here as the Minister for Children. I'm also here as the Associate Minister of Education who has the responsibility for sexuality education inside our schools. So there's quite a, a convergence of um, roles for me here. Um, when I first sat down in this seat, David bought with his office um, their concerns around the, um, the age and sort of uh, lack of capacity of the current act, the current legislation, to manage what are today's issues that are being raised and that are negatively impacting on our children and our young people. And this is one of those pieces of work. Uh, what he has done and what they have done through this research is provided us now with the evidence and the voice of our young people themselves. So we need to make sure that we keep this conversation focused on the young people, not on what adults want to do with their spare time, but on what's happening to our children. Um, and that is what I intend to do. Um, so again, I want to thank them. The piece of work that the Ministry of Education has started is a piece of work that I started with them as the Associate Minister of Education earlier this year, and particularly after Eero reported that sexuality education across our system is variable um, and is not providing what our young people need. I would suggest that while we redevelop that, we need to actually ask our young people what do they need from us and how should it be delivered rather than once again adults somewhere deciding how that message should be delivered and what that message should be. There are challenges with that and that is the tomorrow schools model, but um, we, are up for the, we are up for the challenge. Look, the challenge is multi-layered. Um, you can put in place filters, limits, blocks, you know, around particular um, units, Wi-Fi modems, etc. Um, as soon as someone's roaming um, with data on their phone, you know you need digital, you know you need device-specific mm. kind of limitations. So, you know technically, um, it's it's challenging. It's not impossible, but it's certainly challenging. I think what we have to recognise is we need to work methodically through kind of sensible mm. things that can be done, and then at the end of the day go. But actually, there is no panacea here. There's no perfect cure-all solution that's going to mean that that kids are perfectly insulated from internet porn. I mean, that's, that's, that's never been the case anyway, historically. It's even more of a challenge now. So we need to have, as I say, the education, the counter-narrative, the, the, the support that they need to have some resilience and some ability to talk to people about mm -hmm. what they're seeing. Mm -hmm. the, the real surprise for me personally, and, and others might comment, was just the insight that young people had mm -hmm. themselves about what was happening, what was going on, um, and the potential impacts of what they were viewing. It was, um, you know, they, they showed acute awareness of, of what was going on, and even awareness of when they had an issue, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure that I personally expected that, but it, it was, that was kind of a welcome surprise, mm -hmm. because I think we can work with that, mm -hmm. right? Is there a <coughs> challenge? I was going to Oh yeah, I was going to say that was a bit surprising. When you get a, there's all, the whole debate and kind of an academic debate about are there influences of porn, whether whether or not those are positive or negative. Um, I think it was surprising for me to get back that statistic of 89% of them saying, well, yeah, we think there are, there can be some influence on uh, attitudes or behaviours, mm. and then. The added surprise, yes, again, is about those insights because it's one thing to uh, acknowledge that it's like you can have this debate, but we're already over here. We actually think that these are real issues, 
And then that's so many. We had over 900 individual responses mm. to, can you explain about what you think those influences might be? And um, we got a torrent of them. You know, these young people were answering the question. They wanted to speak on it, which is, you know, really helpful for us when we're trying to talk about solutions that are actually uh, collaborative and uh, making use of the voice of young people. Mm. One of the um, interesting counter-narratives that came through with the individual responses as well was how many positive, or positive, um, I guess, takes on pornography use and what they saw within pornography um, was was quite substantial. The positive influences were carried through um, in their responses. The most surprising thing for me was the amount of people, over 80% of the respondents saw romance um, and affection within pornography. And to me, that's a little bit misconstrued about what romance and affection mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. If you perceive that within pornography, what then becomes your ideal of romance and affection? Mm. I think for me, because these guys are all on the inside and I'm on the outside, right? So, um, one, I think um, it challenges some stereotypes about um, the gender that are using or viewing pornography and mm. I think the number of females that yes. are inside the research and the information that we have from them. Um, I think from the outside in, the level of um, coercion, the level of abuse, the level of degradation, uh, you know, those sort of things that the young people saw when you actually see what were the, how many times did you see that, how many times did you see these like really negative stereo norms. Um, so, you know, from the outside looking in, what, what's inside there, it, it, it's, an, it's, an, it's, a, it's sort of, it's a call to action, to be perfectly frank.